Oh, I'm so mad at myself right now because literally one of the things that I've just learned within the last year is exposing for your highlights. Sure, it sounds obvious, and oftentimes it is, but that's because it's not something that we have to think too hard about during daytime photography, right? Everybody's gangster until they get into this situation where we have glaringly bright neon signages and super overexposed electronic billboards, and then we go, Why am I hearing boss music right now? <laughs> In this situation, your camera just wants to expose for the shadows. And your camera isn't dumb. It's just doing its best like the rest of us. Its goal is just to get you a properly lit photo. And while this image does look pretty decent because there are lots of lights around, whatever color and information that we have in the super bright areas are unfortunately lost. See the difference between this photo and this photo right here? Even if I drag the highlight slider down, it's not something that we can recover in editing despite shooting in RAW. So what can we do? Well, we expose for the highlights. We shoot for those colors and information in the super bright areas. With a tripod, it's gonna be super straightforward. And don't worry, I'll show you how to do it without a tripod in just a bit. But we'll flip over to aperture priority, and for now, we'll shoot at the widest possible aperture available to us, which is going to be f4. Next, we're going to set our ISO to 100 because a tripod is going to allow us to do that. That ensures we get the least amount of noise in our shadows later. Now, this part right here is going to be super important. Because I have my metering setting set to multi, on my exposure compensation setting, I want to be at negative 1.0. Because at this exposure setting, we are seeing all the signages exposed very clearly. And feel free to go a bit lower if you need to. Because we're shooting on aperture priority, we don't need to worry about our shutter speed. The camera determines that for us. So we'll go for a two second exposure to ensure our camera is absolutely still before the photo gets taken. And voila! Now we have this image, and this image is really dark, right? Well, this is the magic when we shoot in RAW because we can raise our shadows and black details to see the stuff in the darkness. All we have to do here is just some fine tuning with our overall exposure, on the meanwhile, constantly adjusting our height so nothing gets blown out. With some editing, this is what our final images looks like. Pretty incredible, right? So this is the results that we would get when we don't expose for our highlights, versus when we do. Now, here's a little fun effect that you can do in camera and make some of these light bulbs shine like stars. Using the exact steps above, but instead of f4 as our aperture, we set it to f9. Boom! See how much more prominent those lights are now as stars? Okay, so how do we do this without a tripod? Let's switch over to manual mode, and the first thing that we want to set is our aperture. We want to go as wide as possible, and in my case, it's going to be f4. Sorry, no fancy primes tonight. Maybe tomorrow night. And the reason why I'm using an f4 lens is because I know many of you who are watching right now might only have a standard kit lens, and the widest your lens might be able to go is just f3.5. And I'm just trying to show you guys that we can do this with any lenses. Next, we'll set our shutter speed, and here are the rules. If your camera or lens don't have stabilization built within, for full frame users, set your shutter speed to match the focal length you're shooting in. In our case, it's 24mm, so 1 over 25 would do. For APS-C cameras, double your shutter speed. Since this is a 24mm, our shutter speed should be 1 over 50. But if your camera or lens have stabilization built within one or the other or both, well then you're in luck because you can actually experiment a little by shooting slightly under the recommended handheld shutter speed. And all that is left is to determine the ISO. To achieve the negative 1.0, we just need to be at ISO 400 in our case. And not too bad, very similar results. Typically, for low light, full frame users, you don't want to go over 6400, and APS-C users, you don't want to go over 3200. But of course, depending on how modern your camera is, you can possibly push it more, but the reason why we want to keep it as low as possible is because we don't want to worry too much about noise. Here's the difference between raising the shadows from our ISO 100 shot versus the ISO 640 shot right here. The ISO 640 shot isn't bad, but you can see the grains get a lot more apparent as we're pushing our shadow details. Now before I let you go, I'll say this. Don't get too caught up if one or two super super small signages get a little blown out. You just want to make sure a majority of your composition is well exposed. Otherwise, you can take one exclusive photo for those extra extra bright signages and use Photoshop to replace them. Easy peasy. If you want to support the channel, feel free to drop a super thanks or stick around and listen to what my sponsor Squarespace has to say.
Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to create beautiful websites. You don't need any coding knowledge whatsoever. Simply just choose from their many easy to use templates. Perfect for people like us who want to focus on our travels and make YouTube videos for you guys, but still want a presentable website for brands that are looking to work with us. Whether you're building your own photography portfolio, an e-commerce store, or even a landing page for your business, design it with Squarespace. Get a 14-day trial with my link below and try it for yourself. When you're ready to launch, you can save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain with my code, Jason Vaughn. Thank you so much for listening and we will see you guys in our next video. Peace.